The very last step of free radical substitution involves termination. And what that means is that two free radicals, free radicals are going to radicals end up combining with each other. So free radicals get used up. What happens is that in the previous steps, a lot of free radicals were formed. And what a free radical is, for example, you have you have uh, a methyl radical which was formed in the earlier steps. Now this methyl radical would try to complete its bonds. So what it can do is, if it meets a Cl radical which was also formed in the previous steps, the two can join up. They can they can both pair up their electrons and they can join up and they could end up forming a molecule of CH3Cl which is chloromethane. So you have all these different free radicals which were being formed in the previous steps and those free radicals uh, they can either continue on the path of propagation or they can all combine and join up and they can form different molecules for example let's look at the previous steps so you have a you have a free radical over here which is a, a trichloromethyl free radical then you have a cl radical as well uh, so there are lots of lots of free radicals being formed in the previous steps here's a dichloromethyl radical formed a cl radical was also present in this particular step uh, let's move on further and let's find more free radicals here's another one this is a chloromethyl radical then you have uh, and the, here's, here's your methyl radical so you have all these radicals so we're talking about free radical substitution of methane so I've pointed out a few free radicals and what these free radicals can do is they can end up joining with each other so so let's try and join these free radicals so uh, as i've previously pointed out uh, there was a free radical which was dichloromethyl uh, so it was dichloromethyl radical so there were two cl's and it could end up joining and combining with another cl radical and the two can join together and when they join up they're going to form trichloromethane there would be three cl's in the molecule so any two free radicals formed in the previous step they could end up joining with each other let's do a few more questions we can have two methyl radicals so i have a ch3 radical which is in need of one more bond and i have another ch rad ch3 radical which again also has it needs one more bond so they both can join with each other and they could end up forming a molecule of ethane the two methyl radicals can join up so there are plenty of different combinations that could occur when different free radicals which were being formed in the previous step they can end up combining with other free radicals in the same steps and they could end up forming molecules and the range of molecules the type of different molecules could be there could be lots of different combinations so you could have a CLCCL3 radical and that CLCCL3 radical could end up form, uh, combining with a methyl radical and these two could end up forming forming a molecule which would have uh, which would be trichloroethane so so we started off with methane and now you can see that if free radicals start combining in random ways you can have molecules which will have more than one carbon atom so so let's do a few more examples we can have uh, a CHCl2 radical combining with a CCL3 radical so the movement of electrons is represented by two half arrows and they could end up forming an ethane with five chlorine atoms in it So you pretty much get the idea that any free radicals which were formed in the first two steps, initiation and propagation steps, they could deviate and they could end up combining with other free radicals because they both need to complete their outer shell bonds. The, all free radicals have unpaired electrons. So what they can do is they can simply join up with each other and, and they could end up combining different molecules. Uh, so lots of different combinations are possible. So the last step, termination, 
you just have to keep your mind open about the possibilities of different compounds that could be formed in the last termination step. Now we've gone through the, the reaction mechanism for free radical substitution and we've gone through all the three steps of initiation, propagation and termination. And what we've figured out is that the reaction is not, is not very simple. You could have many, many different types of products that could be formed in free radical substitution. For example, the first one is HCl, which was being formed in the propagation steps. And then you had a lot of substitution related compounds. Uh, for example, uh, one of the chlorines could be substituted and it, it could end up forming CH3Cl. There could be two chlorines that could be substituted and they could end up forming CH2Cl or three chlorines and so on and so forth. So you can have three chlorines substituted and so on and so forth. So these are these were the products that would be formed when methane gets substituted by chlorine. And we also discussed in the last uh, termination step that two methyl radicals could end up joining with each other and they could end up forming ethane. So ethane is also a possible product of free radical substitution. Then you can have uh, an, a methyl radical bonding with a chloromethyl radical and they could end up forming an ethane again, but this time one Cl would be substituted because it's a chloromethyl radical joining with a methyl radical. So, so you could have all sorts of combinations and this can this list can continue and go on as more CLs get substituted in ethane. So you can have all the isomers of ethane which have chlorine substituted in it. So you get a number of products. What you don't get is hydrogen gas. H2 gas, remember, is never formed. And since it's never forming, so that is evidence that hydrogen radicals are never formed in this particular mechanism. Because if two hydrogen radicals had formed, then in the termination step, the two hydrogen radicals could join up and they could combine to form H2 gas. So that's, that's one thing that you must remember that hydrogen gas is never formed in the free radical substitution mechanism. You get all sorts of different products, but not hydrogen gas. Another important point about free radical substitution is that sometimes because the whole reaction mechanism depends on radicals and if you have more radicals the reaction would be faster so so what could be done is that sometimes tetramethyl tetramethyl lead so this is tetramethyl lead for so tetramethyl lead is sometimes used as a catalyst and the reason why it could act as a catalyst is because it's a source of methyl radicals. So if you have more radicals, so if you have more radicals, the chances of having more products uh, or a faster reaction would be would be greatest. So it's a source of methyl radicals and radicals because the whole reaction mechanism depends on radicals. So if you have more radicals, the reaction would be faster.